Good evening. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed for coming. I'm Carol Stone. I'm the managing director of YouGov Stone. KPMG have provided us with our venue this evening. They've also provided the drinks you have beforehand. And even as important, they're going to provide drinks and canopies after the debate. Over to our chairman, the publisher, broadcaster, extremely busy bunny at this time. A great welcome to Andrew Neil. The YouGov Stone research showed that people uh, believe that you can create wealth. You can create wealth by giving it away. Some of the research you now have. Respondents were split as to whether most senior business people have a social conscience, but the majority believe that more tax breaks should be made available to encourage wealthy donors to provide more charitable giving. We have five excellent speakers tonight, so let's get moving and let's have our first speaker tonight, if he could move towards the podium. He is the international head, global head, global head of citizenship and diversity at KPMG. Please welcome Michael Hastings. We continue to hear an awful lot about how governments will provide tax-related benefits and additional opportunities on the back of tax raising. But we've heard nothing about the citizenship opportunity to give ourselves away or the resources that we have accrued. Last Thursday, I was in New York and I went to have dinner with two friends. He's an American, she's a South African. Just got married three weeks ago. They live in what's called a brownstone flat on the third floor in Harlem, an area of New York that I'd only ever visited once before back in the late 1960s. But back I went into the pounding, beating music of Harlem in New York to experience the delight of every ethnicity possible and every type of person throbbing the streets, go up to their flat and spend the evening discussing how, for a man who earns many millions, but lives on 4% of what he earns and gives away 96% every year to fund the 255 children's private education in South Africa that he committed to when he was 30 years of age, and now he's 33. And why are they living in a brownstone flat in Harlem? Why did they spend their honeymoon in a motel in New Hampshire, not a fancy location in the Bahamas? Because as he said to me, every penny I spend on myself is a penny I can't give to the orphans. I'm only looking at now from the corporate point of view, from the corporate point of view, and for me, it's all about creating sustainable value. I, I look at this, and our CEOs look at this, as a business strategy, a very powerful, positive business strategy. There is, in my definition, no giving away. We just don't do it. We, we create value for both, consistently, for both the grantee and the donor, in this case, uh, the corporations. And we have to think about what kind of wealth are we talking about? And I suggest that we need to widen the wealth brief and understand that so long as as an individual, we manage to see to our own personal needs and progress in our own dimension in terms of security and wealth, we have to be very cautious not to leave behind too many vulnerable people in the very communities within which we live and we belong, i.e. well-being is systemic. No one on their own will ever have a quality of life if they don't contribute to the well-being of their community. I don't want to pose a suggestion that there is a threat, but the truth is that in the underbellies of our inner cities, a very disenfranchised, very disturbed, and very disengaged group is emerging, and it is very important for wealth makers to understand that when you have wealth, you have responsibility, and that if you don't honor your community responsibility, it will come and catch you out, and it will hurt you when it didn't need to hurt you. Um, we did a massive global study last year, seven countries, about 20,000 people, 84% of people believe that business should have as an objective more than just profit. 
Uh, they want businesses that stand for more than just profit. 74% of people believe that they have it as a duty to censure and punish those companies that they don't believe are socially responsible and are doing good things. Um, and 74% you know, of people believe that the most successful businesses in the future will be the most uh, sustainable businesses. We did a sort of vaguely scientific thing where we looked at the 100 companies that people in the US view as the most, uh, the, the best performers in terms of corporate social responsibility, and we track them looking from 2000 to 2009, uh, an index of their share price performance versus the overall US stock market average. They index 180 versus the overall average, the stock market index at 100. So it's actually saying and suggesting that it will, will deliver. And I think the other thing is if you look at some of the most respected and, and talented and brilliant CEOs in the world, you know, they've actually made a personal commitment and, and vision and mission of theirs to be much more socially responsible as businesses. An enormous amount of corporate philanthropy is well-intentioned, but actually isn't very good. Um, generation one of corporate philanthropy was giving money away for public relations purposes. Uh, and it did some good for companies' images, it did some good for charities. But as Charles described, actually the new generation of corporate philanthropy, the corporate responsibility, is much more how do companies use their core business skills to really do, uh, achieve social ends, to build a more sustainable, better world. And David quoted my favorite example, Walmart. No one would describe Walmart as anyone's favorite company. It's a monstrous, huge corporation. But by moving towards environmental standards in its procurement, in its packaging, in its distribution, Walmart is having a massive impact on climate change, on reducing carbon emissions through its power. There's a much wider conversation that the financial sector needs to lead, and indeed the whole of business needs to lead with the rest of society, about how do we actually serve society and be part of building a more sustainable future. But I want to broaden it out and talk about the whole role of capitalism itself to sustain and nurture the environment the society works in. Have you given consideration to the suffering that can be caused as an unintended consequence of getting specifically aid service delivery, specifically about human-based philanthropy? Bill, I think you've I mean, highlighted one of the awful travesties in the international aid business, which is the use of food aid. Um, which, to be fair, our government doesn't do. But shipping grain halfway across the world destroys farmers' livelihoods. It's an absolutely awful, um, sort of, it's done for PR purposes as, a good, as an act of good. It's useless. And I think what that tells us is that we have to be a lot tougher-minded about how we give, that it isn't a sentimental act. We have to engage the brain as well as the heart. Um, so we need a much tougher debate about philanthropy, about charity, and what it really achieves, what the results are. We have taken an approach of investing time and energy in helping businesses to flourish in emerging market countries in order that you don't just see the dumping of aid which causes uncertainties and insecurities and very often damages the market, but you empower and enable the market that gets people into work, gives them independence and jobs and prospects and schools and houses and the opportunity to pay tax. I witnessed it for myself, seeing how entrepreneurs have started to do things which previously were just on the back of aid and now based on genuine investment. Giving someone something is not sustainable, you know, actually putting them in a situation where, you know, be it education that helps them get out of poverty, helps them, turns them into farmers themselves, etc., etc. that's a much more sustainable model than just, you know, sending a million t-shirts over. I think the nature of investment coming from the West has to change. Investment has, is, is something of an abstract term, but it's, okay, I put in X, I'll get back Y. And many corporates, corporations in which I spent many time, uh, many years working, that, that is still the attitude. And I think that has to fundamentally change for Africa and other poor regions of the world. China has done a lot of um, infrastructure projects in many countries. Chinese companies from the ground up come in, bringing in their own labor, their own expertise, and in return we give away our natural resources. We're about evolving the structure of businesses so that every senior business person is paid on creating social outcomes that they then deliver. Thank you.